Greetings. Welcome back to Ministry Monday. Last week, we began talking about empathy. And by the way, let me say on behalf of Lane and myself a great thank you to those who have taken the jump into our Disciple Makers training course. Um, we intentionally limited the size of this first group to 50 so that we could work closely with the participants and get needed feedback about what we could do to improve the training course. We're going to reopen it soon with another opportunity to be part of it. Uh, we will have a, a list, a uh, waiting list, whatever the term would be. And, um, and so we look forward to helping you in developing a disciple-making program for your local church. Uh, last week, I began talking about the importance of empathy, of having an interest in the flock. I want to take that a step further, and I want to challenge some of our thinking about the work of God. Uh, the, the shepherd pastor's job is, is hard. I had a friend who was raised by his grandmother, and I started preaching when I was quite young, 17. And uh, this, this young man's grandmother saw me out preaching, and I'm not sure what she imagined. Perhaps she thought that as a 17-year-old kid, I was, I was making huge money from the honorariums that came my way. And, of course, that, that certainly wasn't the truth. But she decided that being a preacher was a good option for her grandson. And so she prevailed on him to send away for, uh, for preaching credentials with some uh, half-baked group. He had not been to church. He didn't know anything at all about the Bible, but he was going to become a preacher. Well, that didn't work for him. And let me tell you something. If you're considering the call to pastor as a way to get wealthy and to have an easy life, you, you really need to rethink that and do something different. Become a, I don't know, become a CPA or a stockbroker or sell cars or do something else. Because Ministry is a hard job, and you better love it, or you're going to do nothing but batter the sheep that God puts in your care. Uh, by the way, do you know that over 60% of pastors are bivocational? That includes me these days. I want to ask you younger fellows who listen to me, if you knew that God's call on your life would never result in you being a full-time pastor or full-time evangelist, would you still feel called to be a man of God? Because what I just described is going to be a reality for many. Many who equally is called to pastor. A man of God having abilities an anointing that is similar to the fellow who pastors 500. You see, in some places, the ground is hard and it takes decades of plowing before there are ever results. You plow, break up the clods, plant the seed, nothing, nothing, nothing. But in time, it breaks. But it doesn't break quick. There are also those one-talent men and women who God calls into ministry. Many of them put their lives in the hands of someone who can multiply their talent. They read, they learn, they, they watch things like Ministry Monday. They become increasingly effective. But still, it's a one-talent man operating in a five-talent world. If you're that man or that woman, is there a call on your life regardless? Grandpa Grandpa Frazier, planted a church in Tioga, Louisiana, and uh, eventually he drove a school bus until he retired. All through those years, he was bivocational. Was he called? Sure he was. There's a church today where he planted it, and there are people all over the country who came to God through that particular local church. There are two things that I'm probing for this week, and first of all, it's to ask the question, are you sure you're called? Whatever that call results in or wherever it takes you, success and high-profile roles may be wonderful. Or could it be that God has plans for you to serve in relative anonymity? Heaven's honor does not seem to have any reference to the size of the church person leads or 
to the positions that someone holds in an organization or anything similar. Instead, it's just faithful. The second question I probe is this. If you're called, what are you doing to improve yourself? What are you reading? Leaders are readers. What are you listening to others preach and teach? Or are you just listening to the conservative talking heads that are always conveying a particular premise and arguing with some other political position? Are you sitting at the feet of someone who can teach you how to lead people and be a good shepherd? As I began preparing this particular thought, it was not my intent to travel this particular path, but I really felt a prompting in the spirit. For somebody, it is a time of reassessing. It's time for you to decide, is this what God has called you to do? And if it is, gird up the loins of your mind, get your life in focus, and do something for God wherever that takes you. See you next week. God bless. 